Welcome to West Suffolk College STEMtastic Live 21. Today we're joined by Rolls Royce and we have Abby and Mark who are going to be here to answer some questions for us. Um, don't forget there's, they've got a video Rolls Royce that you can watch on the website. And we'll, they've also got a competition that schools can um, um, apply for and it's a collaboration with Curiosity Box. Entrants will be in with a chance of winning a free Rolls Royce STEM th uh, themed STEM day in a box. Each kit contains fun science, engineering activities for up to 30 key stage two students to explore electric flight. So you look at the resources online and then ask any questions you would like to these guys with us today. Abby, would you like to go first and explain what it is you do and how you got to Rolls Royce? Uh, hi everyone, I'm Abby. I'm 23, so I've just left uni effectively and moved into full-time work. Um, at school, my, my dad used to mess around a lot with cars and changing over parts in the garage. And as far as I knew, that's what engineering was really. So I think the key thing I did at that age was to go and ask other people what their experiences were and go into workplaces. And I realised if you like maths or you like talking to people or you like problem solving a lot of that actually is what engineering is so I went from there and stuck with science and technology and thought about experiments and how to think about a problem in a new way and found I really enjoyed that so I went on to study um, engineering mathematics at University of Bristol which is a lot about sitting on your laptop using software which are probably things that you already use and trying to use that in new ways to solve problems that maybe haven't been looked at before so it was all about working as a team basically little challenges of here's a problem there are a few ways to get to an answer how are you going to do it so I spent four years doing that and I did a master's after my degree in that as well and I worked at Rolls-Royce in the summer holidays and yes, I recently started there full time. At the moment, I'm working in manufacturing, which doesn't always mean sitting and looking at the metal and making it into a new part that you're going to stick on an aeroplane. What it can mean is managing that and thinking, is this part good enough? How can we decide if it's good enough? What experiments can we do? And who are the right people to speak to? I don't know everything about the part, but who does? So a lot of it is about talking to your colleagues and your friends and working out the right way to go about things so yeah I'm still picking up experience now and really enjoying aerospace it wasn't something I considered really until college so you don't have to have had a lifelong passion for aeroplanes or cars or anything specific because engineering is problem solving in absolutely every area everything we see and touch really that's man-made in the world so yeah if anyone's curious about the different routes you can take I'm happy to answer those questions so yeah thank you brilliant thank you Abby Mark do you, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself sure uh, I'm Mark I'm a graduate engineer at Rolls-Royce um, I first sort of developed my sort of interest in engineering whilst I was at school um, so I picked up uh, the scientific subjects um, at, at GCSE level and then continued to sort of develop um, that interest by going on to A-levels at, at college. Um, I did uh, chemistry, physics and mathematics. Um, I've always sort of been interested in, in understanding how things work um, and a specific interest was sort of how planes fly. So since I was young, I was always curious about how that worked. Um, so that led me, that led into me doing aerospace engineering at Bath. Um, this was a five-year course um, with a, a placement year halfway through where I worked at Rolls-Royce. Um, so I was a design engineer uh, as part of that year, um, picked up a lot of skills and sort of learned how engineering really works. So um, it's sort of been all about collaborative, working with, with teams in solving sort of complex problems and using your, your innovation and technical skills that you learn um, throughout the academic uh, period. Um, and currently I'm, I'm a design engineer uh, on the graduate scheme at Rolls-Royce. Um, so I'm using all the skills that I've learned throughout university and my uh, placement year. Brilliant, thank you. 
I was just wondering, Abby, how did you find it studying engineering? Because not many girls are particularly drawn towards it. I know obviously you're saying you were because of your dad, but how did you find it? And what would you say to young girls out there about studying engineering? I, I would say most importantly is don't, I think it's easy to get an impression of what engineering means from the men around you that go into that discipline because a lot of them love the hands-on part of it or can be quite passionate about power and cars and electronics and it doesn't have to be all about that I think it's really important that different skills come together if you look at one object in front of you whether that be you know a car or just something simple like your kettle yeah. people will have different interpretations of how to make that work and I think it's so important for people with different perspectives to be in a team and I'm not saying that women and men think about things in the same way but that gives women in a way a huge advantage because Definitely. you will be bringing something to the team that it's not already got you don't have to love playing with spanners or being outside covered in oil you might just love maths and you might approach equations in a different way or go oh yes that works but what about that you could do it this way and having that different dynamic is very helpful so I think try it try chatting to people maybe you've got great people skills maybe you've got great math skills great organization and management skills those things all apply really well to STEM and I think you shouldn't let it phase you and if you enjoy talking to people in general you will be taken seriously if you're curious and polite and you're passionate so I don't think it should ever put anyone off being being a woman. I think a lot of youngsters out there maybe look at it because they associate engineering with like a car mechanic and you know like you yeah. say covered in oil dirty um, where I mean I know for a fact that's not not the case like where you work Mm -hmm. I mean, to explain the environment would you could you for, for some of the youngsters I mean I, I I you know I have an opinion I know what it looks like but could you describe mm -hmm. perhaps Mark what it or Abby Abby yeah I mean I think I my dad was a farmer as well as working on cars so these are both male dominated industries and perhaps I did have that impression until college that me saying I wanted to be an engineer meant I'd be doing the maths for things that made you like a mechanic and you know I would be intimidated I'd look at a car and some people know just naturally looking at something oh this is how you deal with that and change it and I didn't know that so I was a bit intimidated and thought oh I'm not cut out for this I don't know how to weld or how to do these practical skills and I wasn't good at woodwork at school but um you go into a workplace and it's very much like if you sit in science at school, if you sit in your physics lessons, if you sit in your maths lessons, is it always the boys that are the ones that are doing the best? I would say generally that's not true at all. And that is generally what engineering is about. It's like the science experiments that you're doing in physics. You're using computers, you're sitting in a meeting room talking in a team, you're writing out plans on paper. And sometimes these parts can come into it as props if you want to be making them and handling them. That is an option, but that's not, totally what it's about you know you're not in a garage you can be in an office or a big factory and it's all huge robots and machines now it's yeah. it's not really manual work you don't have to be strong or good with a spanner put it that way yeah exactly carrying on from what what abby said so i i went into engineering and i wasn't the sort of person who was sort of into cars or had any of that prior experience but i had the the sort of passion for sort of trying to solve problems and i was sort of more you know, someone analytical, um, like the, the technical work and the mathematics behind things. Um, so that's how I have got into engineering. And I would encourage anyone who's got any sort of interest in any science to, to get involved because uh, engineering, I mean, that role is very sweet. We obviously uh, sort, of need sort of mechanical engineering knowledge and aerospace uh, engineering, um, but there's engineering in all fields, you know, bio, bio, biology, uh, chemistry, um, physics, you, you can, any, any field of, of science or mathematics, you, you can apply engineering. Um, so I definitely encourage uh, students to try and get involved 
in, in understanding what engineering really is at a young age. Um, I got involved in a few sort of taster sessions where uh, we'd go off to universities and uh, or, or in colleges and get an understanding of, of engineering there. Um, so I'd definitely encourage that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, you don't need to worry about not being able to, you know, not having any prior experience in, in sort of hands-on, you know, dirty, oily work. Um, you, you'll, the, the key engineering skills are all about you know, problem solving, collaborative, and, and just having that, that, that passion to, to try and solve problems, really. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy to answer any, any specific questions that anyone may have. Um, that's great. Thanks. One of the questions, what's um, the most exciting part of your role? What's one of the exciting things you've seen at Rolls-Royce or been a part of? Have you seen, seen anything you think, wow, that's amazing? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's been, there's been a few, few, few experiences, really. So um, when, when I visited sort of the, the headquarters up in Derby, they have um, sort of a, a tour of all the engines. And when you actually go out, go out and see it in person and you appreciate how large and complex what we're actually working on is, it really makes you feel, you know, wow, this work I'm doing at, at Rolls-Royce is, is really something like, incredible. And, and the people that you're working with are you know, top class, world leading sort of engineers. And yeah, when you, when you actually get to see the, the engines in person and, and how large they are, uh, it's really incredible. And, and even at work, I mean, sort of day-to-day -day, the people that you're talking to and when you speak to them on, on what they've been working on you know the past 30 years it's, it's incredible yeah brilliant so have you oh sorry <laughs> have you seen um anything that stood out to you personally i think what amazed me the most was that i spent two summers in Rolls Royce and yeah I never really got to see a part you would look at a drawing of a part and then you'd spend so much work looking at data so there'd be experiments you'd be making graphs you'd be looking at the numbers and it would be several like 40 people's full-time jobs to be looking at this small part and then I saw that piece of metal and it almost wasn't what I imagined it to be and then I saw as Mark said, it being put in a big engine and it makes you realise how much work you put into this one small part that then goes into this much bigger piece. I think another thing that I found quite amazing was the amount of, of knowledge you can gain and that you never have to be the person to know, to know everything because whatever you're working on, you won't necessarily know the things that that's attached to and you can speak to the people that understand that and it's okay not to know everything. You're not expected to go and understand how the whole engine works. What you're expected to be able to do is ask the right questions to the people who do know, and no one really understands the whole engine. People understand their part and they learn to communicate between each other. And then it's the whole team that can then between them understand it as a whole. And I think realizing that and the importance of other people and those intensely high levels of knowledge everyone has about their own tiny part of this huge system is amazing. Brilliant, thank you. Um, your question, what are the opportunities for progression within your roles and where do you see yourself in the future? Let's go first, Mark. Okay, um, yeah, so Rolls Royce do uh, a graduate scheme. Um, well, so actually, I guess I'll start with, so during university, I obviously did uh, a placement year and that's a really good uh, step in the door. So there's a lot of opportunities to sort of get, get into Rolls-Royce and, and see how it, how it is and, and if you'd like it. Um, so I'd recommend sort of internships, whether that be sort of year long throughout university or uh, summer, summer internships. Um, and then once you, once you do those, you, you've got a good chance of getting onto the graduate scheme. So this is a year and a half. So we've got, um, me and Abby have, have another year left on this. A scheme where we sort of move around different places, different departments in the in the company, so we get to experience sort of um, various roles, so covering design, uh, manufacture, and, and verification of our products. And once we finish this scheme, we'll be able to get a, a job in an area that we found interesting, and then we can sort of um, progress in that role. Uh, you can either choose to become 
a technical specialist. Um, and then further on down the line, you become like a fellow. So someone who's a subject matter expert on, on a certain topic, or you can choose to, if, you're, if you've got good managerial and leadership skills, you can go into either technical program management or sort of uh, project management. Um, so there's, a, there's a lot of good opportunities at Rolls-Royce um, and it's sort of, you can sort of choose which route you would prefer depending on, on, your, on your skills and, and interests, whether you want to be more technical or, or, or more sort of managerial sort of leadership role. It's early days, but what do you think at the moment, Mark? What, what's your gut feel? Um, so I'd like to have sort of a broad base of knowledge. So before I sort of specialise, I'd like to understand uh, lots of different areas of, of, of the company and sort of different areas. Um, so that way that I have a more sort of informed choice of where I would like to specialise, but I think I would uh, end up becoming more like a technical specialist. Um, and then if I'd been in that role for, for a certain number of years, and I'd probably feel like moving on to uh, more of a leadership role after then. Cool. <clears throat> what about you, Abby? What, what are your thoughts? Um, in terms of progression, I think I went into picking a degree and quick, like picking where to go for a job, quite scared, if anything, because I thought, am I committing my whole life now to being an engineer and making aeroplanes and you can do so many things with your life? am I sure that like, is this definitely what I want to do? And what I have to say about engineering is I've not just learned how to work with planes and learn about flight and how that works. What I've learned is how to work with people and be a confident person and solve problems. And that can be reapplied everywhere. Nowadays, people don't necessarily stay in the same role or doing the same thing on repeat for 50 years you could be going and doing something totally different in three years time. And, you know, laptops weren't something that everyone owned 30 years ago. So you don't necessarily, jobs that might be perfect for you might not even exist now. There might be roles and things that you can get involved in in 10 years time that you couldn't even imagine now. So I think what's important is to keep your mind very open and think mainly of Am I enjoying where I am now and which parts of the job, not necessarily the company or the place? And if you can solve problems and you like the maths and the analysis, everything that's being made or created, even businesses rather than physical things, there are skills that you can apply there. So, you know, I might want to own my own business in 10 years. I might want to go elsewhere, but... I know the sorts of people that I want to work with and I think that's very important and a company like Rolls-Royce that's full of people that are passionate and good problem solvers and they want to share their knowledge and they want to ask you questions and you can learn from each other I think that's a great environment to start a career in. Yes <clears throat> yeah sounds ideal it really does um so did did I pick up that you two actually work together is that do you do that or are you just on the same program? Do you work closely or not? Um, at the moment, not directly. There's a lot of teams within Rolls-Royce. And if you start as a graduate, you get the opportunity to slot into different teams for three month placements. So you can learn what the team does, who the people are, and yeah. how that fits into the larger company. And then you can move on. So you get a good idea of the whole structure. So we both work in Bristol in, in a social setting we've known each other quite well. And in an extracurricular setting, the apprentices all work together to think about how we can help with STEM or how we can help each other by just doing fun things outside of work or, you know, accessing opportunities to learn new things that we might be curious about. So there's a lot of connections socially, but we haven't had a project or a business purpose together yet. That's good. So is there many layers of Apprentices, are you classed as an apprentice or are you graduates? So we we yeah, we we are graduates, um, and there are we we work alongside apprentices as well. Yeah. Um, who tend to be more sort of on on the manufacturing side of things. So obviously we have to work with them. Obviously we can't design our products without knowing how they're manufactured, and they've they've de they're developing all the skills and the know how on on how the, these products are actually. Uh, produce so we do need to work uh, closely with them. Do you know much about the apprenticeship program that 
Rolls Royce offers? They they have a couple of levels to access it. So I think you can do a degree, you can be a degree apprentice and you will do university part time whilst you're doing your apprenticeship. So you're gaining hands on experience, learning how a business works. Like I didn't even know how to send emails formally when I first started. So I think it's great to jump into a workplace and understand how people work together. Or you can join, I think at 16, you can join earlier and um, go to college a day a week, or they like, I'm not entirely sure how it's structured, but quite a few people come at an earlier age and they um, go through college whilst they're working as a time employee at Rolls Royce. And a, a lot of those go on to be really successful. And there's a, a real spread of different input streams that have all come together to form a lot of the teams. And it does allow for, movement between jobs and a good understanding of manufacturing from the apprentice scheme as Mark said. Hmm. Yeah there's I mean you know across the country there's many many apprenticeships um, in engineering and obviously other fields but it's a very like a very um, big field for students to look at and research different apprenticeships and the programs like you say there's a degree apprenticeships and you also got higher apprenticeships and then craft apprenticeships which feed in at the different levels, which is very good. We, um, we have over 100 apprentices with us currently studying up to degree level. So yeah, it's really good. Um, I think that's it. I don't think we have any more questions. So I'd like to um, well, thank you, Abby, for um, joining us. And thank you, Mark. I appreciate it a lot. And very insightful learning what you've been up to and what you've been doing at Rolls-Royce and you know, a glimpse of what it's like working for Rolls-Royce. It definitely sounds very good. Thanks um, for having us. Uh, welcome. I'd like to thank everyone for watching and enjoy the rest of your day and uh, catch up with the next session, which I'm not sure what it is, but it's on the website.